program of Desh Kumar Mishra. Today we are going to talk about the languages in India, various kinds of languages that is mother tongues, scheduled languages, regional languages and classical languages. We will first talk about the mother tongues in India. Let us first define what a mother tongue is. What do we understand by the term mother tongue? Uh, let me tell you that mother tongue is always a language. So, what I mean to say is all languages are mother tongues, but all mother tongues are not languages because language is an abstract construct, language is a socio politically uh, devised construct, it is a socio political construct, people make it. It is not that uh, you can technically or scientifically say what actually language is. So, given that situation, mother tongue usually refers to a person's first or native language learnt at home in childhood. So, whatever a child, whatever language, whatever mother tongue, uh, whatever language a child learns when uh, in her childhood that is referred to as mother tongue. Uh, we had the various uh, national curriculum frameworks say in 2000 and then uh, 2005 and they have defined mother tongue as languages of home, street, neighborhood, peer group and kinship networks, regional language as language widely spoken in the state or in the case of minorities outside the state and state languages as languages officially recognized by each state. So, these are the various uh, definitions that have been given by the national curriculum framework. Uh, there was a report in UNESCO uh, by given by UNESCO in 1953 and uh, that has defined mother tongue as mother tongues are native languages, the language which a person acquires in early years and which normally becomes its natural instrument of thoughts and communication. Mother tongue is the first language which is clearly acquired by a human being in early childhood through interaction with other members of his or her speech community. So, all these definitions you will see talk about mother tongue in terms of the language that a person acquires in early childhood through interaction with other members of her family. Mother tongue includes the following elements, the language that one has learned first, the language one identifies with or is identified as a native speaker of by others, the language one knows best and the language one uses most. Census of India defines language and mother tongue differently. So, in uh, census of India, we have the definition of mother tongue as mother tongue is the language spoken in childhood by the person's mother to the person, if the mother died in infancy, the language mainly spoken in the person's home in childhood will be the mother tongue. The census records the mother tongues, which are of course languages of the persons spoken at home and then designates, classifies the mother tongues in terms of their linguistic affiliation to actual languages or dialects. Thus, an inventory of classified mother tongues returned by 10,000 or more speakers is grouped under appropriate languages at the all India level. So, thus we have Avdhi, Manjari, Brajbhasha, Chhattisgadi, Garhwali, Haryanvi, Hindi, Jonsari, Khadiboli, Kumauni, Marwadi, Pahari, Rajasthani, Sadan or Sadri, Sirmauri, Surgajiya, Surjapuri and others are mother tongues classified under the Hindi language. Similarly, you will find Kashmiri, Kishtwari, Siraji and others are mother tongues classified under the Kashmiri language. Bhatri, Oriya or Odia, Proja, Reli, Sambalpuri and others are mother tongues classified under the Odia language. Apatani, Bangni, Nishi, Tagin and others are mother tongues classified under the Nisi or Dafla, Dorli, Gondi, Kalari, Maria. Muria and others are mother tongues classified under the Gondi language and so on. So, we have uh, in India according to census of India 100 languages which are spoken by more than 10,000 persons and there are more languages and mother tongues, but because they are spoken by fewer than 10,000 persons 
they are not listed in the non-scheduled language of Census of India uh, because of a policy after 1961 that those mother tongues which are spoken by fewer than 10,000 persons shall not be listed. The, uh, in terms of teaching of mother tongue and other tongue, so called other tongue, there also we have to understand the difference between mother tongue and other tongue. The teaching of mother tongue that is also referred to as first language or L1 basically involves introducing the learners to reading and writing at the initial stages and later develop the higher order language skills that is representation, argumentation, refutation and supporting one's point of view. Other tongue is a common term which includes second language and foreign language. A second language in short SL or L2 is any language learnt after the first language or the mother tongue. A second language is a non-native language that is widely used for purposes of communication usually as a medium of education, government or business. English for example has foreign language status in China or Japan or some other foreign country, but English is a second language in India. A foreign language on the other hand in the more restricted sense is a non-native language taught in school that has no status as a routine medium of communication in that country. The term foreign language refers to a language where no such special status as one finds in the case of a second language is implied and a foreign language is not at all available in the immediate environment of the learner. So what I mean to say is that second language is similar to foreign language, they are learnt after mother tongue, but foreign language is not present in the vicinity of the learners, not in the country where the learners are located. That is why in India for example, Arabic, French, German, Russian, Chinese and many other languages are foreign languages. Now let us talk about the scheduled languages. As you know, the constitution of India has 12 schedules and they talk about various things. For example, the first schedule contains the list of states and union territories, the seventh schedule contains the union list, state list and the concurrent list, the eighth schedule contains the list of languages and so on. So the languages which are included in the list given in the eighth schedule are known as scheduled languages because they are listed in the schedule that is 8th schedule. Until the 21st amendment of the constitution in 1967, the 8th schedule contained 14 languages and the list I uh, will show you Hindi, Gujarati, Marathi, Kannada, Malayalam, Tamil, Telugu, Odia, Bengali, Assamese, Punjabi and Kashmiri, Sanskrit and Urdu. They were there, 14 languages were there before or up to 1967. There have been so many amendments afterwards, so four more languages were uh, added uh, in addition to 14 and again in 2003 uh, a set of uh, four more languages were also added and that is why after all the amendments till today we have 22 languages in the 8th schedule of the constitution and the languages are Assamese, Bengali, Bodo, Dogri, Gujarati, Hindi, Kannada, Kashmiri, Konkani, Maithili, Malayalam, Manipuri, Marathi, Odia, Nepali, Punjabi, Sanskrit, Santali, Sindhi, Tamil, Telugu and Urdu. Now let us talk about a little bit more about the non-scheduled languages. As I have already mentioned that we have eighth schedule and 22 languages are listed in the eighth schedule. So they are scheduled languages and people have coined a term that uh, uh, as against the scheduled language because eight, 22 are scheduled language, so the remaining ones are non-scheduled, they are not included in the schedule in constitution. And these include uh, 100 uh, languages and within 100 you will find there are some other tongues as well. So as I have already given you example, for example uh, uh, Nisi is a language and under that you will find Apatani, Nisi, Bangni as mother tongue. So similarly, we have a language Kabui and within Kabui we have two mother tongues Kabui and Rongmai and one of these is language that is Kabui. So we have 100 languages and 3 are of foreign origin. So Afghani, Kabuli or Pashto that is one. Then we have Arabic also there which is a foreign language, Persian is there 
which also is a foreign language and although English is a foreign language, but now it has been accepted as uh, an Indian language in many documents. So, we have 100 languages there which are spoken by more than 10,000 persons. Let us talk about now regional languages. So, although technically there is linguistically there is no term called regional language or there is no perfect definition of a regional language, but what we understand by a regional language is that if a language is spoken in a particular area or region within a state or in the country, it is generally referred to as a regional language spoken in a particular region of the country or particular region of a state. There are uh, other definitions and I uh, will uh, cite it European Charter for Regional or Minority Languages, they have also given a definition. So, regional or minority languages means languages that are number one traditionally used within a given territory of a state by nationals of that state who form a group numerically smaller than the rest of the state's population. And second, different from the official language or languages of that state. So, it has two parts. First one says if the number of speakers of a language form they are numerically uh, weak, they are numerically smaller than the rest of the state's population, then the language sp spoken by that community will be known as a regional language. So, for example, if you look at uh, a state like say uh, Karnataka and they speak largely Kannad, but there are language groups, there are linguistic groups which speak other languages. So, we have say Irula, we have Tulu, we have Kurgi. So, all these mother tongues or languages are there, but compared to the larger population who speak Kannada, so their number is less. So, they form numerically smaller communities that is why these are also within the state called regional languages. Then second part is different from the official language or languages of that state, uh, which is not uh, actually true so much for India. We have a different socio-political situation. I uh, will cite you one example, look at the state of uh, Jharkhand. Now, there we have about 11 languages declared as official languages and some of them are actually included as mother tongues within some other language. For example, Panchparganya or Khota, Nagpuri, Sadri, they are included within the language Hindi as mother tongues, but they have also been declared as official languages. Now, the second part of the, this definition does not work here. Uh, it says regional language has to be different from the official language of that state. So, in Jharkhand for some mother tongues it does work, but now I, as I have told you that these four or five are mother tongues within Hindi. So, it does not actually fit well in this second part of the definition, but largely it is ok in some uh, other states. Uh, I have given you the examples here, uh, Angami, Ao, Assamese, Adi, Nishi, Bengali, Vili, Bhotia, Bodo, Devri, Dogri, Garo, Goni, Gujarati, Kashmiri, Khasi, Konkani and so on. Now, the second part of the earlier uh, definition that uh, I had uh, quoted, you will see that uh, out of these, uh, there are many, all are uh, regional languages. So, you will see that Assamese is the state language, official language of Assam. We have Bengali the official language of Tripura and West Bengal. We have uh, say uh, Gujarati, the official language of Gujarat, Kashmiri, the official language of Kashmir. We have Konkani, the official language in Goa. We have Kannada, the official language in Karnataka. We have Maithili, which is not uh, declared as official language in Bihar, spoken there. Malayalam is the official language of Kerala, Manipuri, the official state language of Manipur. Mizo, the official state language of Mizoram, Nepali, the state language, uh, official language in West Bengal, part of West Bengal. We have Odia, which is state official language of Odisha, Punjabi in Punjab, Santali in Jharkhand, uh, Tamil in Tamil Nadu, Telugu in Andhra Pradesh and so on, Urdu in various states. So, in West Bengal, Bihar, UP, Delhi, in many states, uh, Urdu is uh, state official language. 
Now, if we go by the earlier definition, the second part that it has to be different from the official language, then Assamese, uh, Bodo, Kashmiri, Dogri, Gujarati, Konkani, uh, Malayalam, Manipuri, these may not be called regional languages, but in India we consider them as regional language because within India, within the nation, they are spoken, they are restricted to a particular region or area of the country that is India. That is why we consider them regional languages, although they are also state official languages. Now, let us talk about uh, classical language. Generally speaking, a classical language is a language which has a classical literature or an extremely rich body of ancient literature. So, uh, as you know, we have, uh, you must have heard about it or read uh, some Sanskrit. Sanskrit is uh, known to be very uh, old language. It existed, uh, at least we have record, written record that at least 5000 years ago, we find that some uh, written materials were there, but it must have existed uh, millenniums before 5000 years ago. So, and there was lot of writing in Sanskrit, in uh, Vedic uh, Sanskrit and also later we had classical uh, Sanskrit and lot of literature was written, which is at least as old as 5000 years and it as I said that it must be very old. So, Sanskrit has a very ancient literature. There are two other languages in other parts of the world, Latin and Greek in the Europe and they also have rich literature. So, that is why in European tradition, Latin and Greek were considered to be the classical language, because in that tradition, the language means written language. And since Latin and Greek had copious literature, a very uh, rich body of literature uh, written in written form, that is why these two languages were considered classical languages. But in India, when the British came, and uh, they had their own policies about the language and uh, they found that we were using Arabic, Persian and Sanskrit in addition to many hundreds of uh, languages in India. So, they gave them the status of classical languages. So, Arabic, Persian and Sanskrit were also added or included in the so called list of classical languages. In the recent years, uh, there have been uh, some uh, there has been a policy of considering certain languages classical language based on the certain criteria that the government of India has uh, devised. And according to that, there are uh, four criteria. Number one is high antiquity of its early texts or recorded history over a period of 1500 to 2000 years. So, high antiquity of its early texts that means very ancient literature should exist and which should be at least 1500 years old and can be uh, maybe 2000 years, but 15 to 1500 to 2000 years old literature should exist. Then second is a body of ancient literature or texts which is considered a valuable heritage by generations of speakers, not only for the modern day speakers, but for generations of speakers if that written body that written literature is considered a valuable heritage as we have seen uh, this in Tamil, in Kannada, in Sanskrit. So, people uh, consider it a valuable heritage and not only one or two or three generations, but uh, uh, more than uh, say 30, 40, 50 generations. So, that criteria is there and the third one is the literary tradition be original and not borrowed from another speech community. So, sometimes what happens? Uh, we as you know that in many states a uh, particular language may be spoken in two, three, four states. For example, Kuruh is a language which is spoken in Jharkhand and also in Chhattisgarh, then Assam, West Bengal. We have uh, Tamil, Tamil is spoken mainly in Tamil Nadu, but we have lakhs of speakers in Karnataka, in Andhra and many uh, thousand speakers in various other states. So, it is possible that one speech community borrows the literature from some other speech community. So, according to this criteria, the literary tradition has to be original in that particular language, not borrowed from another speech community. Then the last criteria is the classical language and literature being distinct 
from modern, there may also be a discontinuity between the classical language and its later forms or its offshoots. So, this criteria says classical language and literature they have to be different, distinct. That means the classical language should not be same as the modern language of that particular language and literature also should be distinct as uh, you take care of uh, look at uh, the structure of say a language uh, known as Odia or Malayalam or Tamil, Kannada, Telugu, what happens? We have traditions of two kinds of languages. So, one is classical which is no longer used by the modern day speakers. Then we also have literature written differently in these languages. So, there are some literature which were written say in 5th century AD, 6th century AD, 3rd century AD or in case of Tamil and Sanskrit in uh, say 2nd, 3rd, 4th uh, BC. So, they were completely different and the modern day writings are also literature is different in these languages. So, they fulfill this criteria and that is why currently there are 6 classical languages according to the criteria devised by the government of India and they are Tamil, Sanskrit, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam and Odia. So, friends we learn that India is a multilingual country and it has thousands of languages, mother tongues and varieties and some are listed in the age schedule and as of now we have 22 such languages spoken in various states predominantly in various uh, states and union territories. So, they are listed in the age schedule then we have non scheduled languages they are in number 100 and then we also have certain mother tongues which are actually languages but because of socio political region or maybe because they are spoken by fewer than 10,000 persons, they are not listed either in census or in the age schedule of the constitution. But we do have thousands of dialects, varieties and mother tongues, people speak mother tongues at home, but for other purposes like in education, in administration, in judiciary, in mass media, only the standard forms of a particular language out of the varieties, a standard is a set chosen and that form is only used. So, those are considered uh, the languages and they go into various lists. Then we also learnt about that we have in India certain uh, languages which are termed as regional languages because they are spoken in a restricted area, uh, in a particular region, particular area. They Their use is restricted to a particular region or area in a state or in the entire country that is why they are regional languages and we also learned that official language may also be called a regional language. It is not necessary that the regional language has to be different from the official language. Then finally, we also learned that we have certain classical languages in India which have very rich body of literature, very antique uh, literature, uh, literature of antiquity and people have a lot of respect for it and it is different from the modern day literature or language and as of now according to the criteria given by the government of India, we have 6 classical languages in India presently. That is all for today. Thank you.